Hey, my name is Will. I play a lot of different games, but one thing I enjoy doing is going back and experiencing games that I may have missed out on. So in this video, I'm going to be checking out a game that I've heard good things about, but also, I remember seeing it once upon a time when I was a kid. I'm going to be checking out Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse for the Sega Master System. A console that wasn't as popular as the Genesis or Mega Drive, but honestly had some pretty great games. So kick back, relax, and let me talk about the time I decided to play through Castle of Illusion for the first time. Okay, first up, a little bit about me. So I'm a 90s kid. The consoles I grew up with were the NES and the Super Nintendo. When it came to Sega consoles, I had very few experiences with them. There are some very early memories that I remember of my cousin owning a Sega console with some games that had white boxes and a checkered pattern. It turns out those white boxes I remember my cousin having were games for the Master System. The Master System was a console that was competing with the NES. It's a console that didn't really do too well in North America, but it had better success in Europe and in Brazil. And since Australia got lumped in with Europe a lot back in those days, it did pretty well here too. So Castle of Illusion is a game that I have really vague memories about. The front cover of the game is something that feels super familiar. I'm not sure if it was my cousin owning a copy or me coming across the game in some other form, but I've always known about this game's existence and I've never been able to pinpoint exactly how. I had some childhood friends that owned World of Illusion for the Mega Drive, so I do remember playing that one a few times. And again, I would talk about the existence of another game in the series that I had zero recollection of. So since I like playing retro games from time to time on the stream, I decided to finally go check this game out. Though the game did have a remake later and was released on the Mega Drive slash Genesis and Game Gear, I decided to check out the Master System version as that was the one that I remembered. So Castle of Illusion was released in 1990 on the Mega Drive slash Genesis and was later released on the Master System. Developed by Sega, this game is a platformer featuring Mickey Mouse where you must rescue Minnie from an evil witch named Miserable, who wants to steal Minnie's youth and beauty. To defeat the evil witch, Mickey must set out to find seven gems across illusion-filled worlds that are guarded by Miserable's henchmen. The game is a lot of fun overall. The worlds are all bright and varied, and I think the biggest thing that caught me by surprise was how much the game seemed to make nods to other games, like how Mickey has a pogo ability much like how Scrooge does in the DuckTales game on the NES. I thought that was pretty neat. At the time of the making of this video, I had only played two Master System games, this one and Sonic the Hedgehog. And so far, I gotta say, I really dig this system. There's something about the colors on this system. They just seem to be really nice and vibrant. I mean, sure, the NES has its share of vibrant games for sure, but so far what I've seen of the Master System has really impressed me in terms of visuals. Anyway, how did my first playthrough of this game start off? Anyway. Oh, auto scroll! <laughs> Shit. Yeah, not well. So going into this, I didn't read the instruction manual, which is on point for a 90s kid. So I wasn't aware of basic moves like throwing, or even knowing that Mickey had a pogo ability. If you watch the first 20 minutes or so of this stream, it seriously looks like I'm someone who hasn't played a video game in their entire life. Also, to get the most authentic experience, I decided to use a Master System controller because, you know, this was a Master System game. Now, I don't know if it was just the controller I owned being super old or it feeling alien because my brain was expecting it to feel like an NES controller. The D-pad on my Master System controller felt like it was being overly sensitive and it meant I was getting things wrong quite a bit. At first I thought skill issue, but then eventually I swapped to the Mega Drive slash Genesis controller and it was like night and day. I could move Mickey around with fine control and, better still, the pogo had a dedicated button. Anyway, I made the mistake of not picking the first door in the game. I was thinking it would be like Mega Man, where picking the stage really didn't matter, but it sort of does. The Dessert Factory is a lot harder overall and, well, if you're not used to the game... Yeah... Okay, there we go, you pick up. Pick, pick, pick it up! Pick it up, pick it up! Hurry up! Oh man. Anyway, after an embarrassing attempt at the dessert factory, I decided to pick the first door and try out the Enchanted Forest. The Enchanted Forest is a stage where you start at the top of the stage, fight some tree-like enemies, some spiders, 
and then navigate through a series of caves to the second half of the stage where you do some platforming over some pits on top of giant leaves. So I played this stage during the period where I was still adjusting to the game. One thing that was getting me killed was that I would often accidentally respawn enemies by walking a little too far back. Oh, that's level design. What? <laughs> How did it jump? Th Ugh. I can't believe it jumped that high. And I still wasn't aware that there was a pogo ability. But after a few more deaths and questioning if I had made a mistake, I finally discovered that the pogo skill was a thing. Oh, I just realized what this is like the pogo stick. Okay, okay, I'm with her now, I'm with her now. I mean, who needs manuals, am I right? So after that, I was dying less and starting to actually be able to play the game. Though I haven't ever played DuckTales before, something I should probably fix one day. I am aware of how that game plays and that this skill is highly reminiscent of Scrooge's cane. Only, you know, it's Mickey's butt instead. Powerful butt confirmed. After a couple of game overs, eventually I got through the leaf section and reached the stage's boss, this spooky old tree. Did this just become Mega Man? This took me back because this was giving me Mega Man vibes, something I certainly wasn't expecting. So wait, a platformer that plays like DuckTales and Mega Man? Could it be that I was playing a gem? I was going into this blind, so I wasn't exactly sure what the sentiment on this game is, but I was really starting to have a lot of fun. The boss sort of reminded me of the Airman fight from Mega Man 2, and since Mega Man 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, this was definitely putting a smile on my face. It did take a game over and a few attempts to get this fight down, but eventually the first boss was down and it was time to start the next stage. I decided not to deviate from the ordering here and just move from left to right. So the next stage was Toyland. So Toyland begins by taking these moving platforms from right to left. After this initial section, I wasn't aware that these clouds were something you could step on, so I went to the left and climbed a series of ladders. After avoiding some toy enemies, I received my first health upgrade. Again, the Mega Man vibes were strong here because it was reminding me of Crash Man's stage, only, you know, without the robot birds throwing eggs at you. So after figuring out that you can take the clouds for a ride and butt stomping several chess pieces, I was finally feeling more comfortable with the game and started to reflect on how poorly I had been doing up until this point. Oh, we've definitely left the struggle bus now. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing a lot better. I wonder how many people, like, if they watch this later, are just gonna get put off by the first few minutes of me just, like, playing like I've never played a game before, you know? It'd be the equivalent of if you played Mario Brothers 1, and then you just died to Goomba in 1-1. One, one. That's more or less what was happening. Well, it wasn't long before I began to struggle with the platforming, again. So, up until this point, I was still using the Master System controller. Though I was having my issues with controlling Mickey correctly, I was pressing on. And then I got up to this room where there are a bunch of inflatable toys moving up and down the screen, and well... You know what, I'll let the clip do the talking. Oh, that's that did me dirty. Oh my god, alright. Yeah! <laughs> Oh, play the Mickey Mouse game, yeah! Oh, have some fun! Relive childhood memories! Unlock those memories you lost! Hey, remember when you saw this for the first time? Haha! -ha. Made you love video games! After finally getting through this section and totally not struggling on a trampoline, I collected the key to open the door to the boss room. So, did I win first try? Nope. The game gives you a few continues before you have a full game over, so I was feeling confident that if I spent one game over here and there, I could get through the game without too much trouble. Now that I knew what the stage was about, surely I can get up to the boss room again with no problems. Right? Oh, that was stupid! <laughs> Is it bad if you're narrating your own gameplay and then shake your head? It is, isn't it? Uh, anyway, it was time for the boss again. So the boss jumps around the screen and creates an earthquake. 
When it does, a bunch of toy balls come falling down that can damage you. So I had to quickly take it out before it had a chance to do too much damage. There was no chance I was about to repeat this stage again. So now it was time to reattempt the dessert factory. So now that I was more acquainted with the game, I did better, right? So, you know, I, I went to... S <laughs> Damn it. Again, still using the master system controller here, and I kept pushing on. So I was able to make it to the next part of the stage where you must run away from giant donuts and ride cupcakes over a lake. Now that the auto scroller section was over, I was doing much better. Before I knew it, I was up to the boss fight and was in for a nasty surprise. Oh shit, it's like chocolate. Wait, oh no. Are you kidding me? This is... <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh no! This is yellow devil, but like chocolate? <laughs> oh no. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Okay, so for those that don't know what I'm yelling about here, Yellow Devil is an infamous fight from the original Mega Man. It's quite possibly the hardest boss in that game. The fight involves you fighting this yellow blob that breaks itself up into pieces and then sends those pieces flying at you. You must dodge all the pieces and then when it reforms itself on the other side, you have this small window to attack it. It's a really tough fight and I've only ever completed it legitimately a small handful of times. The other times? I resort to a glitch where you keep pausing and unpausing the game to keep damaging it until it dies. So to see this here so early came as a shock. But also if there was any doubt if this game has some nods to Mega Man, this should clear that up. The next few minutes was just coming to terms with the fact that I had to deal with the Yellow Devil fight. The only issue was that, though I knew how the Yellow Devil fight worked, I still had no idea how to damage this boss. So one by one, my lives were reduced to zero, and I got a game over. I knew if I was going to have any chance of beating this boss, I needed to change one thing. I swapped to the Mega Drive slash Genesis controller, and the difference was night and day, and I mean immediately. Between the better D-pad and the dedicated button for the butt stomp, my gameplay was actually starting to look competent. Before I knew it, I was up to the boss again and ready for round two. So, whilst dodging now was much easier thanks to the change of controller, at the end of the day, this was still a Yellow Devil-like fight. I still had no idea how to damage it, and you know, looking back on it now, I don't know how I missed the obvious here. So, can you guess how to damage this boss? If your answer was, stop butt stomping the chocolate he drops and throw it at him, congratulations, go treat yourself to a piece of chocolate. Admittedly, in the moment, I did look up the answer to how to damage him, but, you know, I'm not above doing that when there's a Yellow Devil-style fight involved. So, though this fight does seem to be inspired by the Yellow Devil fight, it actually isn't as difficult. Turns out, if you stand to the side right before the chocolate pieces fly out, you can actually avoid all the damage. Also, though not obvious, you can walk through the body before the face appears, and not take damage. It's lenience that the Yellow Devil fight does not give you. So yeah, all you need to do when the body has reformed is to throw the chocolate piece on the ground at the face, and there you go, damage dealt. So after a couple of more attempts, the big chocolate bar boss was down. And after climbing up a ladder, it was time to move on to the next stage, the library. So this stage has you navigating a library that I think is for giants. There's a lot of big props like office supplies, books, and fridge magnets. So in this stage, there's a lot of toy airplanes flying around that you need to dodge, and eventually you get up to a swimming section by diving into a coffee cup. It's a pretty neat theme overall. In Super Mario Bros. 3, my favorite world was the land of the giants, so the stage felt very nostalgic as a result. After navigating over some pits and avoiding more toy airplanes, I got up to this giant piano which, just when I was going to run back and forth and start playing music, the notes came to life and started attacking me. Rude. So after another game over, and totally not being bullied around by fridge magnets, Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> <laughs> Not doing that to be funny, I was genuinely like, hey! What <laughs> doing? It was time for the boss. This giant book that shoots letters at you. So this boss was pretty easy. I just had to butt stomp the letters to gain height and butt stomp the boss. I got it first try, no damage taken, no problems. This was a huge difference over the previous boss. And with that, it was now time for the clock tower. 
Okay, I know you're probably tired of hearing this by now, but come on, this feels like a Mega Man stage. At least the start of it. I don't know, it just reminds me of Metal Man stage from Mega Man 2. But you know, the stage is its own thing. The stage has a lot of platforming challenges with various moving clock parts. But that's okay, at this point, I was a master of the game, right? Oh, that looked like a ladder. No, I panicked. So after this pendulum section, there were some moving platforms and then this enemy to take out before another permanent health upgrade. So now Mickey was at his full potential. The next part was a little tricky. I had to walk up this moving platform as this gear moved up and down the screen. Here I was thinking to myself, wait, is this really how I'm supposed to do this? But then I saw I had missed the obvious here where there is this screw that you're able to throw. So I threw the screw, took out the enemy, and began to walk forward. And then the enemy respawned. Yeah, the section wasn't exactly the best. But afterwards, the rest of the stage was pretty straightforward with some simple platforming and enemy dodging. So now it was time for this stage's boss. The first attempt, I didn't have any health left, so I had no chance. But on the second attempt, I saw that all you had to do was butt stomp the clock face when it swooped you, and to avoid the small enemies where possible. So yeah, another straightforward boss. And with that, the final door was down. A ladder dropped, and it was time to use the seven gems to summon a rainbow that led Mickey to the gate of the Witch Tower. So the stage opens up with some haunted armors that behave like dry bones and these massive weights trying to crush you, so nothing too tricky. The next section involved me carrying a lantern and totally not falling for the mimic enemy. Ah, oh, it's a mimic! <laughs> I was not the- oh, oh no. Bail, bail, gonna die, gonna die! After collecting a key and totally looking before I leapt, there was a little bit of a puzzle here where you had to reuse the same key to open two doors that led to an auto-scroller section. This section was a little stressful because there was this bit where it felt like you needed to let the stage push you along in order to complete it. I don't know, maybe there was some other ability I was unaware of here, but it felt like the only choice I had was to duck and wait. Anyway, I still managed to get through this section first try. The final section of this stage involves navigating a series of corridors where the lights turn on and off. It's at this point I realized that I was basically out of time. I guess I had taken too long in the previous section with the whole key puzzle thing. But hey, at least there are checkpoints, so death just meant repeating the final section. The only thing I wasn't a fan of here was at the very end there is a pick a door scenario. You choose one of the three doors, and if you're incorrect, you have to repeat the whole section again. Thankfully, I got it right on the second attempt, so now it was time for the boss. The boss is a dragon that is shooting at you constantly. It's a pretty tricky fight. The dragon will shoot in your direction over and over again. So the key here is to carefully time things so you're able to throw the barrel at the dragon's head to be able to damage it. I did have a game over here, but was able to get back up to the boss in no time. Now that I had a better idea of what to do, I just needed to get good. So after a couple more attempts, the dragon went down. Yes! But it was far from over. It was time for the final fight with Miserable, which I failed on the first attempt. Thankfully, the game lets you continue from where you left off, so no need to fight the dragon again. This boss fight involves dodging projectiles whilst trying to hit Miserable with a lantern. Though simple, timing is everything in this fight. It's pretty easy to jump at the wrong time and eat a hit from either Miserable or the projectiles. So, I did have a game over here and have to play through the whole stage again and beat the dragon again. But at this point, I had the stage memorized so it didn't take much effort. I also managed to beat the dragon first try so I was pretty proud of that. So now it was time for the rematch. Since the game doesn't give you a chance to heal after the dragon fight, the first attempt was a write-off. But on the next attempt, it happened. That's my epic gamer moment. Wait, it's even it's even got the apology from Mega Man. That's what Dr. Wily does at the end of Mega Man. Okay, it's official. I love this game. And with that, Castle of Illusion was done and dusted. Though there is a version of the game for the more popular Mega Drive slash Genesis, I think the Master System version is great and the gameplay here is really solid. Though, at the time of the making of this video, you won't find this title in any recent retro game collections. It's definitely a gem, and if you haven't really looked at games for this console, this one will definitely make you want to check out more. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at Castle of Illusion for the Master System. Hopefully this will want to make you check out the game for yourself for the first time, or perhaps play through it again if it's been a while. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video, as it'll let me know to keep doing more. Or hey, if you got any recommendations for other Master System games you think are gems, sound off in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for new stuff to play. But in the meantime, if you want to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is to hit that old like button. Or if you want to see me play Castle of Illusion and more, be sure to check out my Stream Archive channel. I'm also live on Twitch most nights Australian time if you ever want to catch me live. Anyway, that's it from me. If you want to see me talk more about the games I play, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.